Hello, welcome to Learn Swift for Beginners Lesson 16. Today you're going to learn about how to manage a collection of data in what's called an array. If you're working with many pieces of data, it would be hard to manage them with simply constants and variables. So let's take a look at how arrays can make our life easier. All right, let's get started. Now, arrays are one of three collection types that are available in the Swift programming language for us to use and manage our data. In this language guide, you can see a diagram of this uh, array on the far left side. We're going to come back to this diagram in a second, but first a definition. So you can think of an array as a collection of data that is ordered by indexes. Now, if that doesn't tell you too much, let's jump right into a Swift playground um, and I'll show you exactly how beneficial they are and also how to declare them and how to use them. So first I'm going to delete this default variable here and we're going to create a couple of uh, variables ourselves. So let's say var a equals dog, var b equals cat, var c equals bird. And now let's say I wanted to concatenate or add the word my in front of each of those uh, values there so that I would have my dog, my cat, and my bird. So I would have to do something like this. I would have to go a equals my space plus a. And this would result in a being my dog because uh, we're adding the word my with a space to a and a is dog and then we're reassigning that result into a again thereby overwriting what was there before so now a is actually my dog now i would have to repeat this for cat and i'd have to repeat this with bird i can't even use what we learned in the previous lessons in regards to loops to make my life easier i'd have to write this out three times for each of the variables so here's the perfect chance to use an array to organize this collection of data so in order to create an array with the data already in it, we're going to open up two angle brackets or square brackets if you'd prefer. And inside these two square brackets, we put each piece of data separated by a comma. So we have dog, we have cat, and we have bird. So just like that, we have an array with three pieces of data. And if you remember what I said in the definition, that arrays are a collection of data organized by indexes. What do I mean by that? Well, you can see that there are three pieces of data here. So there's three distinct spots, you can think of it. The leftmost spot here, the beginning, is index zero, or spot zero if you'd prefer to think of it like that. The next one is index one, and the last one is index two. So arrays start at zero, and because there are three items here, the indexes go from 0, 1, to 2. And now if I quickly bring up that language guide again, you can see in this diagram that in this array, there are five items. And so the indexes for six eggs is 0, index for milk is 1, and so on, until it reaches 4, even though there are five items, because it's 0 based. Okay? So let's go back down here. So this is great that we have an array here, but we need some way to reference that array. So actually what we do is we can create a variable, let's call it D, and we assign this array or this collection of data into the variable D. So now if I wanted to access dog, for example, I would write D and then I would write square brackets like that. And in between the square brackets, I would put an integer representing the index of the item that I want. So let's say I want dog, I would put zero. So you can see here I would get dog, right? And so we can print that out and that would print dog down here. Now if I change the index to one, then I would get cat instead. Now let's do an example where we have something like this. Just to duplicate that, I would say, uh, let's say A equals my plus d zero like that i can do b equals my that's my cat and finally 
I would get my bird. But then I mentioned that there was a better way to do it if we leverage what we learned in the previous lesson on loops. Well, we can. Let's take a look at using for loops and simplifying our work here. So remember, for loops will loop a piece of code for a specified number of times. And you can see here that I'm working with index 0, index 1, index 2. So this becomes really easy. I can say for, remember, the next, um, the next piece of the for loop is a counter. So, you know, it's my variable to hold the current index. And then you write in, and then you write your range. So I can write 0, 0, sorry, I mean 0, dot, 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 2. And this is going to loop from 0 to 2. So you, I think you can kind of see where I'm getting at. What I'm going to do is print uh, my plus d. And inside here where I put the index usually, I'm going to put counter. And you can see here, it took the playground a little second, but that's exactly what I expected to do here. So in the first iteration of this for loop, counter is zero, right? That's the starting range. So zero gets passed into here, and I would get this printed out. This is dog, d at index zero, right, is dog. In the next iteration of the loop, counter is one, and so I'm actually accessing index one of my array d. So that's why I get cat. And then finally it loops again and counter is 2. And I would access this bird index here. I want to show you another way um, to use your for loop with an array. And that's simply to say for item in D. So what this is going to do is it's going to loop through all of the items in the array D. And in each iteration of the loop, it's going to take that item or that piece of data and it's going to assign it to item. So I can simply go like this. So you can see that it gets printed out again. Right in the first iteration, item is dog. In the second iteration, it's cat. In the third, it's bird. So this is a pretty simple way to write it, and you can see that it saves a lot of work from doing it kind of one by one like this and one by one like this. Arrays in conjunction with loops, really powerful stuff. Now with arrays, there's other cool things you can do. Let me just um, make some space here. Maybe I should delete this stuff. You can actually declare an empty array. So it's an array that would contain no data at first. And the way you do that is just like storing things into a variable or a constant, arrays can only store data of a certain data type that you specify. So since it's an empty array, how you would do it is you open up two square brackets, you put the data type inside the two square brackets, and that data type represents the type of the data that the array is going to store. So I'm just going to put string here. And then you end off with two round brackets like that. And just like that, now E refers to an array that is empty right now, doesn't contain any data, with the intention of storing string type data in this array. Now, if you're going to create an empty array like this, you better be able to add data to that array, right? So what makes arrays really useful is that you can add and remove data from that collection. So I can add or remove from this collection right here. I can add or remove from this collection here. Let me just show you how to do that. There are a couple of different ways. I can do something like this, d plus equals two angle brackets like that again. And let's say I wanted to add mouse. And now my D array would contain four items, as you can see here, dog, cat, bird, and mouse. In fact, I can even add two pieces of data at once, comma. And then here, I could put owl, for example. So it would add mouse and owl to that array. So now my array has five items from zero to four, right? Starts at zero, one, two, three, four. 
make sure that you don't forget that plus sign right here because if you do that, then essentially you're creating a brand new array with these two items and you're assigning it to D and you've just lost this data here. So plus equal is for adding items. Now seeing this plus equals, you might be tempted to use minus equals to remove items like this, but that actually doesn't work, unfortunately. You can't remove items from the array like that. What you have to do is the array actually has functions that you can call on it to remove items. So you would say D and then you would press dot on your keyboard or the period key and out pops a list of functions that you can call on this array. And using the append function is going to do exactly like this plus equal is. It's going to add items into that array. But let's look at the remove functions. So you have remove all, which is going to remove all the items in an array. But you can uh, use this one here, remove at, and you can specify the index of the item you want to remove. So if I put zero like that, that's going to remove dog from my array. So now it's only going to contain cat, bird, mouse, and owl. Now what if I don't want to completely remove dog, but I just wanted to change that element right there at index zero. So let me get rid of this remove line. You saw that you can access items in the array by doing that, right? Putting in the index there. Well, you can actually change the item. You can change what is assigned at that index by typing D, square brackets, put in the index you want to change, and using the equal sign to assign something new into that spot. So here, let's say turtle. And that is going to now change your array. If I print D, oops, zero, I'm going to get turtle instead of dog because I just changed it up here. The last thing I want to point out is that arrays also, you can check how many items are in there if you look at the count. And that's going to return the number of items in your array. That is sometimes useful when you want to use a for loop with a range and you don't know how many items are in the array. You can use this array.count and get this number here. But just keep in mind that uh, although D has five items right here, the index of the last item is actually only four because the first item is zero. It goes from zero, one, two, three, four, right? Even though there are five items. So just keep that in mind if you're going to use this uh, array.count in conjunction with a for loop or something like that. Okay, so that's where we're going to end with arrays. As you can see, when you type array dot, there are a lot of different functions with arrays that you can do. Um, what I've covered here in this lesson is enough for you to use arrays and leverage some of the main benefits of arrays. As we go on and we're building apps together, you're going to be learning new ways to use arrays. But for now, these are the main things you need to know about arrays in order to start using them. If you like this video, please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.